Alright all and welcome back to a new video. It's been a while since we've done one of these, since the Cheltenham come down. Uh, we're back now though for the next couple of weeks, hopefully back better than ever with Fairy House, Aintree next week and then obviously on to Punches Down. We'll probably do a video or two in the interim as well. Uh, you'll know if you're a fan of the Let's Talk Racing channel that we've already done a Fairy House preview. We covered the, the big races. Um, that was pre-Dex. We recorded that I think Wednesday night went up uh, yesterday morning. And an awful lot of the races have kind of ended up shaping out how we thought they might do. But um, these videos are going to be like the Cheltenham ones. These are going to be final selection videos uh, for all the races throughout the day. And I've got one that I'm going to put up now for entry next week. And I'm going to start off the video by talking about it. But first of all, on to something a little bit more important. Uh, as you well know from plenty of plugs I've done on this channel, uh, I am well associated with the Horse Racing Buddy Club. I'm a member. I'm very proud to be a member as well. And unfortunately, a fellow member, um, Uncle Ray McLean, uh, has, has lost his fight with cancer uh, very recently. And uh, he was one of the, the long-standing members. He'd actually fought cancer a couple of times and had survived. Unfortunately, hadn't done so. Uh, but he was a, a great man, came across a great man. And as a club, we're looking to do something uh, to pay our respects. And we're trying to get a race at his local race course, Sedgefield, sponsored in his name. Now, that obviously costs a little bit of money. So I'm going to have a GoFundMe page as the first link you'll see in the description down below. If you could offer anything to it, you know, it is a GoFundMe, whether it's five quid, whether it's 10 quid, 20 quid. If you had anything, it would be great just as a, as a great cause for a great man uh, to have a, a bit of a kind of last hurrah really uh, with a race in his honour at Sedgefield he would have loved that and as a club we'd love being able to give him that uh, honour uh, upon him and uh, his his family now uh, who have been very appreciative by uh, giving us you know they, they sent us loads of photos of, of Ray in the last couple of months where we've, we've managed to do a couple of things for him he looks a, a brilliant man wish I could have met him myself but that's just something to bear in mind if you do have a couple of quid left over from Cheltenham or you've just got a few quid spare, it would mean the world to me and the club if you could donate to such a worthy cause. Moving on to the Aintree one, because I do realise uh, it's a bit bizarre, but I've just got a notion about this one and I want to put it up. I should have put it up midweek, actually. Because uh, I've actually, you know, without sounding after timey, I have backed it at a slightly bigger price. Uh, but William Hill uh, are the only uh, bookie at the moment to have priced up the Doombar Juvenile Hurdle. Uh, the four-year-old hurdle on the first day, the Thursday card of Aintree. And I'm putting up Mon Morale for that race. You can currently get 7-4 to four about him. And the reason I'm putting up Mon Morale at 7-4 to four is he's a confirmed runner. If he doesn't run, it's a non-runner, I'm afraid. Um, you won't get your money back if you back him now. Uh, I can't, you know, I can't do anything about that. It will be marked down as a loser in my book if that is the case. But he's down to run. He's due to run. Nichols has said this is his target. No Irish juveniles running in the race. That's been declared by the five-day decks. There is Adagio in there who... I think the plan is to run, but it's had a very hard race at Cheltenham in the Triumph Hurdle, and there's Tritonic in there um, that didn't run very well at Cheltenham. Might be suited by a flatter track, but I think this Mon Morel's an absolute beast. The way the Triumph Hurdle ended up rocking up uh, this year, I think he'd have gone very, very close, if not win the race itself. I think he's a stunning horse. If you watch the latest Let's Talk Racing video uh, about our Cheltenham 2022 kind of long shot pokes, I put up Mon Morel at 50 to 1 for the article, uh, and he'd want to be winning this race if that's going to. Um, if, if that does happen, he'll contract massively for next year's article. I'd say he'd be, you know, max maximum you'd be able to get is 20 25 to 1 if he was to go and win this race impressively i think he will and i'm going to take 7 to 4 now because i don't want to be sitting here this time next week previewing the entry day one card and mon morale's 4 to 5 and i could have got on at 7 to 4 and could have told you guys to get on as well uh, so that's the one that's that's a brucey bonus for you before the uh, where we've got into fairy house i decided to mix it up instead of leaving it right to the end 
Look, the very house card tomorrow looks a hard card. And most importantly, I am recording this video at quarter to three. So the majority of the prices aren't out. So I'm taking it off the uh, suggested prices that come with the race card. You know, the predicted prices sort of thing. And I will update the video later on tonight when those prices come out and the prices that I've taken. But at the moment, I'm using them as a guide and a guide only to the prices. And I'll put them down below initially, but will be able to edit um, later on tonight when the official prices come out for a lot of these races. Starting off, 2 mile 4 Maiden Hurdle. Looks a tricky race and not one of the great races, to be honest. I'd be willing to take on Willie Mullins as Eden Flight, who doesn't look to have uh, scaled the heights. I think they thought he might do so. And I'm instead going to go and have a chance uh, on two in this race, but one is a win bet, one is an each way bet. The win bet being Salt Wind for the Kennedys. I know he's the type of horse that probably you should be backing each way just on the on the basis that he comes second and third an awful lot but at the same time i think he's going to be four or five to one he's five to one predicted at the moment i think he might be even a hint shorter than that he fell last time behind dunboyne at clonmel i don't think he was going to win that day but he's finished second and third he's posted rpors in the mid 120s which nobody else in this field has the um has done so you know a Gordon Elliott horse is predicted to be fa or, sorry I shouldn't say Gordon Elliott Denise Foster horse is predicted to be uh, the favourite based off these predicted uh, prices with Jordan Gainford on but was uh, disappointing the last day I thought when third in a, in a fairly average race Assault Wind brings a bit more robust form to the table he won abandoned point to point for Michael Kennedy uh, Pat, his brother Paddy takes the ride and I think he'll go very well and the one I'm going to throw in a price and I'm I'm not going to put up all these Nolan McKernan horses completely blind, uh, but I'm going to take a small chance on Big Shanghai. Currently, 8-1 to one predicted. I would be very, very shocked if you couldn't get double-figure price about this horse. He was second in a point-to-point -point himself, running a big race for Colin Bow. He then went and ran in uh, one of, on one of those point-to-point -point bumper days for Paul Nolan. Oh, and was a massive drifter was 5-4 to four out to 11-4 to four, ran far too keen ended up finishing 8-9 to nine. it was a fairly average effort he's obviously a much better horse than that I think a hurdle in front of him may be able to settle the horse a bit more maybe bury him in with a bit of cover as well wouldn't surprise me if he was to outrun his odds but I'd be more hopeful that you might get double figures about him the 145 is a 3 mile hunter's chase uh, a couple of old stagers in this. The likes of Jury Duty uh, is in there. Stand Up and Fight is in there. It's all guesswork. Who used to be a very good horse himself uh, in there as well. I'm going to take a chance on Stand Up and Fight in this for Ender Bulger and Derek O'Connor. Uh, currently in at second favourite on those predicted prices at 9-4. to four. He was a bit of a no-show in the Cheltenham Fox Hunters. He was an also ran. I think he finished 10th. Um, was nowhere close, but won over this course and distance earlier this year with Onyo O'Connor on her on him uh, beating Bill away and was second to jury duty in a similar enough contest two starts back. I think this slight dropping class into this type of a hunter chase uh, should have this horse bang there. Jury duty, even when he was trained under rules, you know, in, in the big handicaps, big graded races, it's just a horse that I never really took to. And I'd be prepared to take him on, especially at the likely odds he's going to be of maybe even money five to four. So stand up and fight for me in the hunters the two and a half mile mares chase at the moment in the predicted prices it has Ellie May at four to five I think that would be a bit of a gift if that was to be the case I think she wins I think she's much better than Mount Ida on even a cross form line between uh, Mount Ida with Colreavy and Ellie May with Colreavy Ellie May has a fair bit in hand I believe and it'd be I'd be surprised if she wasn't able to pick up a bit of Cheltenham compensation uh, 4 to 5 not the greatest price but not the greatest price in the general scheme of things but if I was to get 4 to 5 on Ellie May for tomorrow I'd be very happy and I would take it 255, the Ladies National 3 Mile Handicap Chase. Got two for you in this, like I do for a couple of the uh, next few races, which are tricky handicaps. Uh, one being spades or trumps for Gavin Cromwell and Lisa O'Neill, of a mark of 122. This horse, I believe, will be well backed. Uh, he's currently 7 to 1 on the predicteds. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping we might get around that because I want to back him each way. Uh, he's not the greatest jumper, that's the only thing. But he ran quite well in a similar enough uh, contest at Punchestown, two starts back under Onyo O'Connor. 
who gave him a very good ride. He is a very, very suspect jumper, though, as was shown the last day when he's backed into favouritism with Simon Torrens up. And Simon, who's one of the best conditionals in the game, couldn't even get this horse to jump. Uh, so th you are taking a big risk, but... He <laughs> Based off his hurdle form and even pieces of his chase form, he's better than this grade. I think off a mark of 122, there is scope to win a handicap like this. Lisa O'Neill, probably one of the best amateur uh, female jocks you're going to get. Uh, so therefore, I think that's a very good booking. The other one I'm going to play at a bigger price, hopefully, is a ah, little look for Tom Gibney and Sheila Larkin, who takes £7 off his back. Off a mark of 118 the seven pounds off almost in effect off our mark of 111 you forget that this horse was third only a year and a half ago in the porter stand uh, behind killer miller and Monlino of all people um when off a mark of 126 i believe uh, and james o'sullivan was only taking a few pounds off that day so uh, this horse could be well handicapped he is 11 years old now he is getting on and his form this year has left an awful lot to be desired but again, stepping back down in grade a little bit, also off a light weight with a claimer taking £7 off. If he gets into a rhythm out in front, he might be tough to peg back. I'm, I'd be disappointed if we're not getting a fairly juicy price about him. The 3.30, uh, three-mile novices handicap hurdle, a very tough race. I'm going to side with the two Denise Foster horses in this race. Falcano, uh, who's predicted to be 11-2, to two, uh, which seems short, but it probably is going to be the price he's going to be. And Dunboyne, who's predicted to be 12-1. to one. Now, I can't believe this horse is going to go off 12-1, to one, personally speaking, but if he is, I think that's a, a very, very generous price because he'd be the one of the two I'd actually fancy a little bit more. Um... He won the last day uh, at Clonmel. He beat a Paul Nolan horse called Mercury Lane, who's gone on to win a, a novice third at Limerick by 30 lengths since then, and Meticulous was back in third. He faces Meticulous again in this race, and I think he'll be able to uphold that form. He won a point-to-point -point, uh, at the back end of last year. He looks like a real stayer in the making. He was beaten by Bob Ollinger and Capadano in two maiden hurdles over much shorter trips, and on his first step up to three miles, he won and won impressively. I think there's more scope for improvement for this horse over three miles. Miles. I think the bigger the the stam the, the em emphasis even on stamina is, I think the better chance he has. I think if you could get a double figure price about him, I think he's a, a cracking good each way bet. And I'm going to play each way Falcano as well. Hopefully, uh, we will get over that five to one mark for him. He was backed off the boards in the Martin Pipe. His maiden hurdle form is a bit middling, uh, but he won a point to point last year. So there's. I suppose there's hope that three miles should bring out the best in this horse. As I say, he was well backed uh, before the off in the Martin Pipe. Ended up going off, I think, 7-1, to 15-2. to two. Was brought down at the first, having been collided into, uh, which was awfully unlucky. Gavin Acker was brought down in the same incident. And I think, based off that, they obviously think he's quite well handicapped off a mark of 127 in Ireland. And Jack Kennedy's pick of all the Denise Foster runners. And I think he should go very well. But the price probably will be indicative of that. The 405 is the only race we have prices for. Thank the Lord. So we can actually make a stab at this. And I'm going to give you two again. East Key Lane being the first one at 17-2 to two each way for Jack Kennedy and Denise Foster. Of a mark of 133. I'm looking for a big day from Sneezy Foster tomorrow. And for Jack Kennedy. I think this horse has a big handicap in him off this type of mark in the two-mile sphere. I know Eclair de Beaufou is well fancied for the same stable. He ran a great race in the county hurdle. He's just a little short for me to be involving myself in in such a competitive handicap. Eski Lane, he's not the easiest ride. His head sometimes goes to one side. He sometimes cocks left uh, under pressure. But he has an awful lot of ability, as was shown when a close fifth in the champion bumper last year, behind the likes of Fernie Hollow and Appreciated. That form looks very solid. He's been underwhelming as a hurdler this year. But as a result, he's in here off a mark of 133. I think that's generous, personally speaking. And I'd be surprised if he wasn't in the business end of things. In a handicap, you're getting five places from the majority of bookmakers. And the other one, I'm certainly going to be rowing in on his Hurricane Cliff for Henry de Bromhead and Hugh Morgan. At 10 to 1, the prize you can get about him now. Off a mark of 130, Hugh Morgan claims 5. 
This horse beat Captain Kangaroo the last day at Nace over two miles. And Captain Kangaroo was very well fancied that day for Willie Mullins. I don't think Mullins could see him getting beat. And Hurricane Cliff kind of beat him quite easily in the end as well. Showing a smart enough turn of foot. He'd finished second in two maiden hurdles before that. Uh, sam- sandwiching a slightly disappointing fifth in a leopard sound maiden hurdle behind Get My Drift. I think he's a likeable horse. It would surprise me if 130 is the ceiling of this horse's ability. And hopefully he might be a progressive of type and 10 to 1 looks big for a horse of that nature the 440 the mayor's bumper i'm going to take one that's more than likely going to be near the top of the market i suspect party central and brooklyn glory will be at the top of the market and i'm going to be going for party central uh for denise foster again and jamie cod uh, this horse actually won a bumper for Roger McGraw with Jamie Codd up and was subsequently sold to the Morans and has finished second in two listed, well, uh, second in a list of bumper behind Castro Vatera and then second in the Mare's two bumper uh, behind Grand G at the Dublin Racing Festival. Was ahead of Brooklyn Glory that day. Brooklyn Glory looks a very talented horse for Willie Mullins but a hint of a tear away and sometimes can be str- you can struggle to restrain and Party Central looks to have her wits about her and she deserves a, a, a win in this type of a bumper, I believe. And I think a bit of better ground. She won at Tipperary for Roger McGrath on good ground in October time. I think a bit of better ground will suit this horse down to the ground. And hopefully she can take the world of beating. She's predicted to be in here at 3-1. to one. I think she'll be one of the top two in the market. And will take a fair bit of stopping. The 5.15 will have two selections. But one of them will be my nap of the day. And my nap of the day is let's be clear about it. Uh, for Gavin Cromwell and Joey Dunn. Uh, Gavin Cromwell is in red hot form at the moment, and this horse uh, is a predicted price of two to one. And if he is two to one, that will be my nap of the day. And nap of the day is a two pointer. Uh, if you don't know, I'll explain actually uh, just at the end of this video what I mean by all of that. But let's be clear about it being my nap at two to one. And certainly, if you can get the predicted price about this horse, I'd, I'd back something each way in it being meet and greet for Ollie McKiernan and Johnny Barry at 16 to 1. If you can get 16s, I think that's a fair each way price. He did me a favour last the last day at Leopardstown uh, when getting down on the nod to beat another Denise Foster horse. Uh, they were well clear a third as well. Or sorry, no, third was quite close, but the well clear fourth. Uh, he's a nice enough horse. He was second in a punch of sound bumper the time before that behind Gigolo Die Die of Henry de Bromheads, who's quite well uh, touted as well. He's been a slowly progressive horse. He loves better ground as well, which is a, a positive to him, and I think he could go well, especially if you can get a bigger price. You most likely will, considering he's a McKiernan horse in this type of a bumper. Uh, but just so people know, in, in all these selections, uh, if it's a win bet, it's usually a one point win. In, and each way bet is a 0.5 point each way and obviously a nap of the day which will use will only have one uh, per day and sometimes there won't even be a nap of the day but if there is that's a two point win uh, so for people that don't understand that's the way i'm basing these bets that's how i track them uh, i've got a spreadsheet of all my day-to-day bets that i put up on twitter these youtube selections do make it onto that as well we had a very good march with cheltenham included in that uh, doing very well for us so hopefully We'll have a bit of luck, you know, fingers crossed, touch wood, uh, that April and, and the end of the National Hunt season can finish well. I want to let know what your guys' selections for Fairy House tomorrow are down below in the comments. And, of course, I will update those prices in the description uh, when I get the opportunity to do so. And if you have the chance to get on William Hill, I would uh, strongly advise backing him on morale at 7-4 to four because I just don't believe he'll be 7-4 to four on the day. Anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe to the channel down below. And of course, try to get involved in that GoFundMe if you can. If you have a few uh, spare bits of change uh, lying over, please do consider um, donating them to such a great cause in honour of Ray McLean for the Horse Racing Buddy Club. And until uh, tomorrow evening, where I'll be back again uh, covering Sunday's card, and then the day after that, where we'll be doing an awful lot of ladies' exhibition run wild Fred talk for the National. Uh, I hope you stay safe, uh, stay well, land a couple of bets tomorrow. Best of luck, and I'll see you guys then. Cheers.